So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is I just kind of want to go back through a quick little review on what we've talked about, all right? And what I'm going to go over here is just going back through vertex form. Now, I'm going to kind of make this a little bit simpler um, for you guys. But remember, so far, we've only talked about um, an equation that's in quadratic equation, if we are a quadratic function. So if we had a function f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the only thing we've talked about as far as graphing parabolas, right? And there's a lot of things that we took out of this. First thing we took out of this is we could always find the axis of symmetry. Um, axis. So remember, we had the axis of symmetry, right? And the axis of symmetry was opposite of b divided by 2a. Sorry. It's a line. x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. Does everybody remember that? OK. Then we also said we could find the vertex. Now, how did we find the vertex? Well, remember, this was your x-coordinate of your vertex. Then what you had to do to find the y-coordinate is you would plug this value into your function. So the way we represent that was using function notation of f of 2a. So that was how you find your vertex. Now, the only other thing that we, well, not the only other thing. The next thing we kind of talked about, this is all review. The next thing we talked about was how to find if it's a max or a minimum, right? Is your vertex a max or a minimum? So to do that, we looked at the value of a. If a was greater than 0, then we said our vertex was a minimum point, right? Then we said if a was less than 0, then we said our vertex was a maximum point, correct? Then the last thing we talked about um, was how to find the x and y intercepts. So to find the x intercept, now let's sorry, let's do y intercept first. To find the y intercept, all we simply did was say put x equal to 0. So what we did is we put 0 in for x, and what we noticed was the x intercept is usually our constant. Right? Because 0, you're multiplying. Anytime you're multiplying, you're going to get rid of your a and b. So your, x, your y intercept was always what c was equal to. So we'd always say kind of y equals c. Then we said find the x intercepts. To find the x intercepts, we said y equals 0. Or in function notation, you could say f of x equals 0. All right, it really kind of means the same you know, thing. f of x is going to be your uh, dependent variable. So now remember, when we had something like this, we'd say 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. What was the only way we could find the value, or what was the way that we learned to find the value of x's on your previous test? You had to do what? Well, that was to graph it, right? We graphed it with tables. And yes, you could have found the x-intercepts with the tables. But we also learned another way to find just the x-intercepts as well. Rhymes with factoring. Factoring, right? We learned how to factor it. We, we learned how to factor it, and then we solved by using the zero product properties. Everybody remember that? Right? But then there was times when we couldn't factor it, and we had to rely on our table of values, right, to find the x-intercepts. Do remember that? OK, that is a review of that. OK, that's when you have standard form. OK, there's your review. So what are we talking about 